So today we're going to look at the pros and cons of negative feedback and the situations where we would use negative feedback to make different types of amplifiers. We'll begin with the benefits of negative feedback. First, negative feedback re reduces uh, PVT sensitivity. Remember, as we've been saying all along, it's very easy to make a gain that has a, an amplifier that has very large gain, but it's difficult to make a, an amplifier that has precise gain without feedback. So what we do in our closed loop system here, and you'll recall that the voltage gain of this system, AV or A closed loop, is equal to little a divided by 1 plus little a times beta, where the whole term is the closed loop gain. This is our open loop gain. And our A times beta term is our loop gain. Now we know that this approaches 1 over beta as A goes to infinity. So here, what we're saying is if A is very, very large, then as it approaches infinity, the term goes to 1 over beta. But A doesn't have to be infinity for our answer to approximately be 1 over beta. And A, can, if it's very large, can uh, vary by you know, plus or minus 5% or normal PVT variations and not affect the gain too much. Now remember that our beta is typically a ratio of resistors. And as a ratio, it's less sensitive to variation as well. All right, another thing that feedback does is it improves the input and output uh, impedance conditions of the circuit. So for instance, if we look at a, what we want from a voltage amplifier, what, feed, what feedback will do is feedback will increase the input re, uh, resistance and it will decrease the output resistance. And why is this better? Well, remember, if we look at our input uh, circuit, we might have a signal source, Vs, that has some resistance associated with it, Rs. And if we want to minimize the voltage drop across the input of our amplifier, if the input resistance Rn tends towards infinity, then we don't get any voltage division for this circuit. All of the voltage would be dropped across Ri. So we could say that Vi would be equal to Vs, in other words. No signal loss. Now at the output, if we look at our amplifier as some kind of output voltage generator where it has some output resistance, and this is going to be driving some load resistance, Rl, if we look here at what's delivered to the output, if our out goes to zero, then V out is equal to V out of the amplifier. In other words, we have no signal loss. Feedback, what we'll see, will improve the conditions of the input and the output of the circuit. And depending upon the type of feedback we use, we can either increase input resistance or decrease input resistance and similarly depending on the type of feedback we can either increase or decrease the output resistance. Another positive characteristic of feedback is that it reduces distortion. So we haven't looked too much at distortion yet but if you can imagine if we have an amplifier it might have a gain characteristic that looks like this for small signals and the slope of the gain characteristic might change as the signal increases, as the signal input amplitude increases. 
and it might change to the point where eventually the output versus input compresses completely. So you can imagine that if we have an input signal and it's swinging over a very wide range that it sees different gains and that might show up as a nonlinearity. So what we're looking at for voltage gain of course is voltage gain is just the slope of the curve and you can see here we have multiple slopes so we have multiple different voltage gains depending upon the input amplitude of the signal. So we have an M is equal to A1, some gain here. We have a different gain at this particular amplitude. And of course, at this particular amplitude, we have even a different gain. Of course, the gain would be zero at that particular amplitude. Now, if we connect the circuit in negative feedback, what we'll find is that we get a much nicer, smoother, more linear curve so for instance, if we connect the circuit in negative feedback, we might get this nice linear curve. And the linear curve might have a slope that's equal to 1 over beta, which is what we expect the gain to be. One additional benefit that we get from negative feedback, of course, is that it increases the 3 dB bandwidth of our amplifier. So if we have an amplifier that has an open loop gain as drawn, we ne re remember we normally set a dominant pole frequency to be at a very low frequency so that we can ensure stability. Of course, this is a very low frequency and so we don't have much usable bandwidth. But when we connect the circuit in negative feedback, we lower the gain of the circuit, but we extend the bandwidth to a new F3 dB closed loop. So of course this doesn't come for free. We decrease the gain of the amplifier by the loop gain, 1 plus T0, but we get more bandwidth and the other benefits that we just talked about. All right, so while we're talking about benefits, let's talk about drawbacks. So, of course, the drawbacks, one we just mentioned, the gain is reduced. So what we do with negative feedback is trade off large gain for improvements in sensitivity, linearity, and bandwidth. And of course, if we want to get higher gain, we can cascade multiple gain stages that are uh, connected in feedback of, at the expense of power and area. We've also been looking at this over the last couple of weeks, but one of the problems that we have is that feedback causes potential for instability. So feedback can cause our circuit to become unstable. If our gain and phase conditions are at a certain uh, value, uh, of course, if, there, if our gain is equal to unity around the loop and our feedback is exactly equal to zero degrees, or the feedback times the gain of the amplifier is exactly equal to, uh, to 180 degrees, we have problems. And we have to be aware of those. Okay, so in the next part of the lesson, we'll look at some specific things like sensitivity, to, uh, like gain sensitivity uh, of an amplifier that's under feedback, and then we'll also start looking at different types of amplifiers and the type of feedback that we would use to create those amplifiers.